Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. So welcome to the last module for week three. And what I want to do now is give you a little bit of a flavor of what this Boltzmann transport equation looks like. Because at the semi-classical level, which means as long as you're not including quantum effects, quote unquote, the Boltzmann equation is really like the starting point for all device simulation. That is when people try to do things rigorously, that is where they would start. Of course, there are approximate methods based on these drift diffusion equations that I mentioned. But all the effects that we have talked about would all be included if you were actually simulating directly from Boltzmann equation. Now, so I just want to give you a bit of a flavor for that and also try to explain why some of the, you know, the discussion that we have had based on small devices is a whole lot simpler than trying to do the full thing, including all kinds of scattering processes. Now, let me explain this point a little. So if you wanted to describe the electrons inside a device, what you'd have to write down is that at a particular location Z, what is the distribution of electrons in terms of their momentums? And for this discussion, let's assume it's just one dimensional. So we are talking about a Z and a momentum, Z component of the momentum. And we can define a function F Z comma PZ comma T, which is at a given time T, at a location Z, what is the number of electrons with a certain momentum PZ? And the Boltzmann equation is a partial, is a differential equation, which actually is in terms of these variables. And it takes some time to digest because, you see, although we have generally been, we have talked about a few differential equations, but so far it's always been like ordinary differential equations in the sense that it is a function of one variable. And both conceptually and numerically, the more the number of independent variables, the harder it gets to visualize and understand exactly what we are talking about. See? Okay. Now, the po first point I want to make is that Boltzmann equation, has one part of it at least, is basically just Newton's law restated. You see, I had mentioned earlier in my, I think in the overview uh, lecture, that Newton laws for mechanics, when you add to it various thermodynamic processes, processes that involve the exchange of heat, that's how you get this Boltzmann transport equation, what's often called the BTE. So let me first try to explain how the Newton part of it gets into BTE. See? Now, the way it works is something like this. You see, According to Newton's laws, you see the way if you use Z to denote the location of an electron, then the rate at which this changes, that's like what you'd call the velocity. Okay? That's what you'd define as the velocity of the electron. And the rate at which the momentum changes, according to Newton's law then, would be they equal to the force that acts on the electron. So force is equal to rate of change of momentum. That's the, that's Newton's law. Okay. Now, the question is that if we are looking at a particular point, so supposing I have this device and you're looking at some point Z and we are writing the number of electrons at that point, with a certain momentum at a given time. Now what we can say is that any electron that happens to be at this location 
was actually at a different location uh, a few, a little bit of time earlier. So if you had looked at the time at t minus delta t, it would have been at a different location z because it was traveling with a certain velocity and so it, ap uh, it appeared here. So where would it be? Well, it would be at a point z minus vz delta t. So an electron that delta t time ago was at a location vz delta t away will now be at time t at the location z. And at that time, it would also have a different momentum because the momentum is also changing with time. So it would be, let me just spread this out a little. So this would be pz minus fz delta t. So all I have done here in a way is restate the Newton's law. That is what we are saying is electrons at this location a little time ago must have been at that location. Now from this then, with, uh, with a couple of steps now, what I would, I'll turn this into Boltzmann equation basically. The one left hand side of Boltzmann equation. And the way it works is something like this. And this is where you need to be familiar with partial derivatives. The idea that something like this can be written as f of z comma pz comma t. So this is the right, I'm trying to write this right hand side and we're saying this function is equal to what it is here minus the partial of f with respect to z times vz delta t. Why? Because this is the function at z and what I want to know is what is the function at z minus some small thing and then I can use what you might call this Taylor series expansion around that point. And so you could write this, this. but then I also have to include a partial with respect to p because of that one. So I should write minus del f del pz times fz delta t. And then I also have to include the partial with respect to time. So that, that's it. So there are these three variables. So I could write it in this form. Now I'm doing this in one dimension because you just want to keep the algebra simple. If you had other two dimensions to worry about, then you'd not only have del f del z, but also del f del x, del f del y, etc. But those are more details really. I'm just trying to give you a flavor of what's involved. So what this tells you then is that this f is equal to this minus that. So what that means is I can cancel the f from both sides. So whatever is here must be equal to zero. So I could write, could take this right here then, del f del t plus vz del f del z plus fz del f del pz equals zero. And this is actually the left hand side of the Boltzmann transport equation. So all I have done really then is, you see what was Newton's law, I have translated it into a different language sort of. And it is really quite different because here the independent variable is time. Z and PZ are dependent variables that evolve with time. Whereas when you write this, the Boltzmann equation, here we are in this collective picture where z, pz, and time, these are all independent variables. And the, indep and the dependent variable is this function f, which tells you the number of electrons at that location. So, okay. Now, if we had just done this, then of course, this equation would not tell you very much more than what Newton's law would ordinarily tell you. And so the part that Boltzmann added to this was this other 
quantity. And that is what schemat just schematically is often written as the scattering operator acting on F. So this is the part that involves all the interaction with the surroundings. You know, I stated earlier that when something is in equilibrium, this is electrons are described by a Fermi function. Now, this is the term that sort of ensures that, in the sense that the scattering operator, it has the property that when it acts on the Fermi function, it doesn't do anything to it. And so, if the left hand side were zero, then the entire system would want to settle to this equilibrium state. So all that, I, you know, requires a lot of discussion, which is why it takes quite some time to get used to this full Boltzmann equation and learn how to use it. But that is what most rigorous simulations of devices, you see, of course, it wouldn't have the uh, general quantum effects, but otherwise this in the semi-classical picture, this is where most discussion would start, see. And the part that we were able to do is that if you are discussing ballistic devices, then you see the advantage is, as far as inside the device is concerned, this is not even important. We can drop that. We are saying electrons just go like a bullet right through. There is none of that. And so what we are left with is this, which as I said is just a restatement of Newton's laws. But more than that, of course now you have the contacts. So when you solve this, you solve it subject to the boundary conditions at the contacts. And that is what we tried to do in relatively simple, with simple approximations. We didn't really do this full thing. So the, in my last lecture, I had written down an equation that looks something like d mu plus dz equals d mu minus dz equals minus mu plus minus mu minus over lambda. Now, where did where did that equation come from? Well, what I tried to show you is that if you believe this and then you use the boundary conditions on mu plus and mu minus, you'd get this interface resistance and you'd get the results we have talked about. But where did that equation come from? Well, if I had to justify it properly, I'd start from somewhere around, somewhere here. Make some simple approximations to this scattering operator. If it's ballistic, then of course I just set it to zero. If it's diffusive, I'd make some simple approximations to this. Then we'd say, well, let's assume the F has a certain form that can be described by a certain electrochemical potential, and that's how we'd get there. And all of that, of course, takes time to get used to, and it's not really a part of this course. I'm just trying to give you the big picture so you know what we did and what we didn't do. And so for most results, again, that we'll be talking about, actually, we have talked about so far conductivity. You know, one of the results we had Earlier, I believe in the very first week itself, we had an expression for conductivity, which looked like Q squared times the density of states per unit volume times the diffusion coefficient. It's something like this. This is the expression for conductivity that we obtained earlier in the course. And again, the standard way of getting a result like this would involve starting from Boltzmann equation. In the coming weeks, you know, we'll talk about the flow of spins. We'll talk about thermoelectricity. That's the flow of how heat is converted to electricity. And all of that usually would require you, again, to start from Boltzmann equation. And as I explained, that is why this expression for conductivity, you seldom see that much in the lit literature. It's not something that you usually carry in your head either, because it usually comes in any textbook very much towards the end of things, after you have mastered the Boltzmann equation, learned all that. Whereas, our this bottom-up approach, which is inspired by this idea that in small devices, you can relegate all the complicated things to the contacts, that allows us to talk not only about this, but also about thermoelectricity and other things in a relatively simple way, without actually ever getting into the Boltzmann equation and learning how to deal with this fairly complicated integral differential equation. Actually, it's a 
partial differential equation and then this operator itself involves integral. So it is as hard as it gets. It's a fairly complicated thing to master. But we can bypass all that and what we'll be doing, I guess, in the coming weeks then we'll be talking about spin and about thermoelectricity. Again, two relatively difficult subjects ordinarily, but hopefully the bottom-up view will help us get the important results and appreciate them much better in a relatively quick way.